Vanakkam everybody. I come from the land of temples, so it's a Vanakkam. Can I hear a Vanakkam from everybody? Satsri Akal, I was going to do that because you have invited me here. So thank you so very much. I'm truly honored, rather ecstatic to be standing before an August gathering. Respected Principal Secretary, thank you so very much for having me here and my co-speakers and my dear children, thank you very much. Well, this is a little Indira Gandhi who went into school on the first day and when the principal asked me, I was five years old, my father was kicked out of the school a million times for not getting into the school, saying that the schools had no place for me because it was completely full. No admissions at all. But my father didn't give up. He said, no, if my daughter went to this school, she would only go to this school at Hyderabad. And persistently, about 20 days of waiting, one final day, the principal calls him in and says, okay, we will have an interview for your daughter and if she succeeds, we will give her the admission. Otherwise, I'm sorry. She was a beautiful nun, a six feet tall. She just picked me up in her arms, took me into the room and said, the first question was, what is your name? I should have said, my name is Srimati. But I don't know. I said my name was Indra Gandhi. And everybody laughed at me. They said, you're Indra Gandhi. I don't know what happened. But then I got into the school. And probably with the same qualities of being a leader, was the school leader, went on to play 10 nationals, basketball nationals, represented the state of Andhra Pradesh, was a senior under officer, NCC, the first ever girl cadet to hold a sword and salute, was a paratrooper, was a silver medalist in all India rifle shooting, word of command, and you name it, I was there. Well, this applause, this applause is what is, gives you that little bit of kick every time you do something extraordinary. Right? All of us get so attached to this. And the same way, on 22nd November 1992, I was ecstatic being the first woman to carry the sword and give a parade, a salute, to the, gen, to the general K.V. Krishna Rao, to the then general K.V. Krishna Rao, who was so surprised to see a girl cadet with such smartness and such boldness. And he immediately called for my father and said, we want this girl to be in the army. And mind you, that was without writing the SSD or SEC. So that's the honor there. Because all of us know how difficult it is to get into the army when you write all these exams. So that was the most proudest moment in my life. While my father came, he met, he shook hands with General K.V. Krishna Rao and pops up my wedding invitation. So, General and all the colonels were, they didn't know what to express. They were like, are you very serious? We are talking about taking your daughter into the army and you are getting her married. No choice. So the invitation was handed and my journey from sword, not spoon my friend, it is a sword. So from sword directly into spatula. I was 18 years old, 
when I went into this beautiful relationship called wedding. And you know how it is for an Indian woman to get into this. With all dreams, thinking that it was a bed of roses, and you had a prince charming coming in a horse and going to pick you up. Little did you know that you had so many things to give up in life. No. You just thought you would get decked up. Only the wedding, 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 mandi and everything came into your faith. You didn't think about the rest of the story. But when the actual hits you, it's totally different. At 20, I became a mother for a beautiful daughter. She was just like a Barbie doll for me because I didn't know what I should be doing to her. She cries and I cry. And uh, I just tell her, please don't cry, please don't cry. Both of us will eat chocolate. Because that's what I knew. But then, that's a challenge again. Indian woman, I guess, even if you're a child, you're really brought up in such a way that we do multitasking. And similarly, this multitasking helped me so much to bring her up. But as she grew, I think mentally, I started growing. And typical South Indian family, it is like, if the husband is really doing well, or I should say Indian family and more so predominantly the South Indian family, if the husband is really doing well, the wife will do the household chores. You may be the best cadet of Andhra Pradesh, you may be the best cadet of India, you might have played 18 nationals, you may be the state athlete, you may be the best dancer, elocution, name it. But you will only be doing pastas and dosas. And mind you children, the pastas and dosas are not going to be awarded. Because it all depends on the mood of the family. If you did the best and expected something from them, it was like, oh, did I have pasta today? And I'm like, no, that was a dosa. Because they're so preoccupied. Ten years went by. I didn't use my pencil or pen. I used to really earn to write. I used them only to sign checks. I was wondering if I was going to be alive for about 60 years, is this what am I going to do all my life? Slowly, I started thinking and thinking why women were getting depressed when they were getting into mid-30s and 40s. Because our times, predominantly women were at home. So you just had not many people to think of as inspiration. Inspiration always comes from within. That's what I believe. Because being a sportsman, I always thought when I fall down, I have to get back. I have to spring back. And nobody is going to come and pull you off. So similarly, I thought I have to pull back. And for every person, every individual, I think there is somebody. That somebody called a friend. A friend comes to you either to teach or to give you an experience, a lesson. I had both. Being a best cadet of Andhra Pradesh, I had a co-best cadet from Maharashtra, whom I met after 15 years of a marital life. I met her at a conference here. I was so happy seeing her because she has grown as an editor, editor of a top-notch magazine in the country. I was so proud of her. I thought, my God, professionally, she is so good. And she was in her best of clothes, wearing evening gown and collecting her award that evening. I was all praised for her. She came to teach me. She was Rima Sasodia, whom I always remember and owe a lot to her. She asked me what I was doing. And when I told her, I was a proud mother, I was a good housewife, and I was doing everything that the Indian woman had to be doing. She said, oh really? What are you doing to yourself? 
Are you happy doing all this? I say, I'm the best. You know, my husband treats me like a queen. I have a big house. I have body. I have everything possible that a woman needs. She said, what about your inner self? There came a thought. There came a thought. And she was the person who put me, because she knew that I was a science fanatic, and she said, there is a conference happening in Miami. I would nominate you from South India. Why don't you do that? With great difficulties, all the permissions and everything from home, from parents, from husbands, from in-laws, flew to Miami. And that's where the journey began. From sword to spatula and now to space. There I had met the administrators of NASA. They'd been given beautiful presentations there. So I went to them, I spoke to them, and found out if children could be coming there and for hands-on activities and everything. They said, yes, of course. Well, do where children come here? I asked them, are children from India coming over? They told me, no, not really. And which part of India do you belong to? I said, Chennai. Oh, no, we knew Delhi, Mumbai, Amitabh Bachchan, Shah Rukh Khan. I said, we don't belong to all that. We belong to Rajni Khan, MGR, and Sivaji. So they said, oh, who are they? I said, don't worry, they're not aliens. And then, there starts the journey. I was given the ambassador status for NASA space camps. And today, I'm the proud ambassador for the Russian Space Center. So the journey kept moving and moving. That was not all. When you start thinking about space, space is so huge. You want to do something, but you don't know what to do. Because you're not a space scientist, neither are you an engineer to do anything. But you had creative ideas. So to put forth all these ideas, to pack up everything, you need brains, you need children. Then I said, okay, let me start an organization which can do everything. So that's where Space Kids India was born. And Space Kids India is to create a platform for children which gives space, that is the inner self, the cleansing of inner self, the space, that is Antariksha, everybody knows about it, and space is the platform. When I was able to take children to the Olympics to perform, the first ever time from the country, about 100 children to perform at the Indian Olympics, London. And then, about 1,500 children to NASA. So this was on and on. But there is something that says this is not all. When you look around, children keep talking only about becoming engineers and doctors. What about scientists for India? Dr. Narayana Murthy, a couple of years ago, mentioned that we still don't have a brilliant idea for the last 60 years. But I refuse to accept that. I totally refuse, because we have the brains. Indian children have got the best of the brains. You needn't be an IIT in, you need not go to the best of the universities, but still even a student from the smallest town has got brains. It's just the platform that is required. So I said to myself, to create scientists for India, let's embark on this journey called Young Scientist India. So last four years, we've been working on that, and that culminated into picking the best six students. Best six students who went on to create the world's lightest, smallest, and the first ever 3D printed satellite, the Kalamsat. We launched that from NASA Wallops, 22nd of June this year, and created history, everybody said, everybody said, are your kids IITians or MITians? I said, no, 
I've got kids from the village called Pallapatti. You wouldn't, you have to figure out in Google where it is. And Narnapuram, again, you have to figure out from Google where these places are. And these kids are from such towns, small towns. But when given a platform, NASA was baffled to see the idea. They said, oh my God, Indians can do so much at this age. And that's history. That's history. So I would say the journey continues. This is not all. We are yet to put a lot of satellites and make a lot of rockets because aerospace is one thing that I feel is kind of treated orphan in our country. Not many students are given the right kind of an opportunity. So we wanted to create aeropreneurs for the country because space is the future. And we could do space mining, space farming, you name it, everything from space. It is not only that we need to go into a governmental organization to work, but as a private organization with student community, we want to prove to the world that our youngsters can do anything and create a name for India. Thank you so very much for this opportunity given. I'm overwhelmed and I would like to show a small video of what Space Kids has been doing. Thank you again.